Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, three countries, three rosés, uh, three... I know, I've, I've, I've just been uh, sweating over... Not sweating, not too much. You don't want too much of that on camera, really, do you? Uh, about what order to do these in. Uh, I've got a Sancerre, um, and uh, then I've got a, a Greek Zinomavro, uh, and I've got an Austrian uh, rosé that's uh, made from Zweigelt, uh, that has been uh, fermented on Grunewald Lina skins. Um, which one shall I do first? I've put them in alcohol order, uh, and uh, surprisingly, the Sancerre ends up being the most alcoholic. So I'm going to start with the Austrian one. Um, so this Austrian one is uh, Martin and Anna Arndorfer's uh, uh, Rosa Marie, uh, 2014, from, uh, I'm not sure whereabouts it is in Austria, but um, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, you'll be able to find somewhere from uh, some annotation I do either on uh, my website or on YouTube. Uh, let's just give it a whirl and see where we get to. It's like a peppery Palmer Violet character here. Um, uh, and uh, when I think of that peppery edge, uh, that's where maybe I, I get the Grunewald Um And then maybe the violet is, is coming from the Zweigel. It smells like, yes, it smells like it's, it's on the red wine side of rosé. But then you get that, um, that peppery edge, which I associate uh, more with, uh, oh, I don't know. I, it, it smells intriguing. It smells like it's going to be um, an assault on the senses. Let's have a see. Yum! Um, our strawberries, um, this pepper, this uh, violet edge flitting in and out, and um, uh, what I like here is it's not afraid to be to show that little bit of tannin there, and I think some of that tannin has come from the Grunewaldi in the skins, um, as well as. Um, as, as from the Zweigel, it's picked up some aromatic, some of those peppery compounds that I associate with the uh, Grunewald Lina, but in the process has picked up uh, a little bit of the, the tannin from the grape skins. So uh, not a wine I want to sit and drink by itself, uh, but uh, I'd be very intrigued to uh, sit down and what would I want with that? I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking goat's cheese or something uh, uh, something on that edge, but it has got this little bit of uh, this, this strawberry bite that makes me think that um, maybe if I get, would go it a bit meaty, if I were to go into the charcuterie spectrum, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm going to have to sit down and uh, polish off the rest of the bottle with um, a variety of foods and see where I get to. I'm going to have another slug. Well, my mouth has certainly been entertained by that one. Let's see whether I can say the same about this next one. Uh, Twin Sales Greek Rosé, uh, Mamma Mia, it says on the back. Um, uh, Zino Mavro, uh, Northwest Greece, 2014 vintage, uh, weighing in at 11.5%. Uh, let's give it a whirl. It smells much more conventional after the previous one. Uh, so I'm getting this uh, slightly fat, um, peachy almost, uh, uh, yeah, peaches, and uh, it's more on those um, peach melba, maybe there's, there is a little bit of raspberry there, but it's, um, whereas the previous one, it felt like it certainly had red wine uh, in its blood, uh, rather than, uh, this one feels, yeah, more a white wine rosé. Honest, juicy, um, as I said, a little bit of peachy character, cooked strawberries maybe, um, and um, I don't know whether it's the legacy of the previous one, but I'm getting a slightly spicy peppery edge on the finish. I like it, but I, it's not as intriguing as the previous one. Let's see whether the final one's intriguing. Um, so this is the, the massive alcohol one. Uh, it's Tesco's finest Sancerre Rosé, uh, made for them by Fournier Père et Fils, 2013 vintage, and it's a mammoth 12.5% alcohol. Let's give it a whirl. So this is 100% Pinot Noir. Uh, it's the palest in colour of the of, of the three, and it has just got a little delicate edge of those uh, Pinot aromas, uh, a little bit of the strawberry, a little bit of the cherry. But I notice more uh, on that um, solid melon peach uh, character. Uh, again, more I'd put it in, on the white wine rosé side, but with that little edge of red fruit. Although you know, you never you never quite know when you've got when you've got, got a wine and you can see the colour. I, I ought to be doing it in a, in a darkened room, but then I'd probably end up missing my mouth and I certainly wouldn't be able to find my spittoon. It's one of those wines that grows on you. First time I smelt it, there was, uh, yes, there was a little bit of uh, red fruit in with the peachiness, uh, and, but also a toasty edge, a little bit of sulphur that was still hanging around. And, uh, but the more I've swirled it, 
the more uh, the, the, that, that's gone. And I had a sip, and uh, it's one of those wines that sort of like gently prods you. Uh, it, I, I don't know if you've got a pet or you've ever sat with a pet. You know those pets that sort of like, like stuff their muzzle underneath your arm and lift it up so so and then the, so you can put it on their back or so they can put it on their back. Um, it just keeps coming back to you. Like that. It keeps coming back to you. Um, and um, it, it, of, of the three, I, mean, I think about what I'd, I'd like a glass of at the end of it, and uh, I'd probably have a not refuse a glass of the first two, <coughs> providing I don't choke in the process. But this is the one I think I'd go to first. I'm going to have another swig before I <laughs> before I choke. Yeah, still growing on me. Um, so I think I'm going to go away and uh, let it grow on me a little bit further. Uh, not too much, you understand, but uh, a little bit further. See you soon.